We have an interesting problem today dealing with sequential measurements. And what we'll see is that based on how we measure that or in what we consider when we measure, that will determine an outcome or whether we need to remeasure. So we have here an operator A hat represents the observable A has two normalized eigenstates psi1, psi2 with eigenvalues A1 and A2 respectively. Operator B hat representing observable B has two normalized eigenstates phi1 and phi2 with eigenvalues B1 and B2. The eigenstates are related by psi1 as a linear combo of phi1 and 2 and psi2 as a linear combo of phi1 and 2. Don't get too uh, worried about what psi or phi and you know which one is on the left hand side or right hand side. Th these will become interchangeable as we'll see soon enough in this question. But understand that these eigenstates are related this way and we'll have a pretty cool example of why these matter. With this context though, let's go ahead and see what we actually need to do. So for three parts here, we have observable A is measured and the value A1 is obtained. What is the state of the system immediately after this measurement? Okay, emphasis on the word immediately there. B, if uh, observable B is now measured, what are the possible results and what are their probabilities? Okay, so we have to be careful about the uh, queuing here between A and B. And then for C, right after the measurement of B, A is measured again. What is the probability of getting A1? Note that the answer would be quite different if I told you the outcome of B in the measurement. Okay, if we know the outcome of B, then we know what state it's in, but we don't. We're just looking for probabilities. So let's see how we can tackle this uh, question. Alrighty, so for our solution then, in part A, if the eigenvalue is A1, then we know that the act of the measurement on the system collapsed the wave function to eigenstate psi1. That's what we can guarantee if we know what state it's in. Now, for part B, we have to recall something, mainly what the probability here would represent in these uh, bases and uh, with all this other stuff that we've learned this chapter. Um, but since we know what the eigenstate is, right after the fact that we measured it, we know that we're in eigenstate psi1. We know that in order to find the coefficients that we need to square for the probability, we need to take all the possible eigenstates of the other observable with the eigenstate that we have now. And in this case, our coefficient is b1 is equal to psi1, or excuse me, phi1 uh, with psi1. For b2, we have psi2 and, phi, and psi1, phi2, psi1, excuse me. And if we just take their inner product, in this case, the dot product will do pretty quickly. Uh, we see that uh, the others are orthogonal. That's the only way to be the, in the eigenspace. Either way we go, we see that we end up with the coefficients of three halves and or three fifths and four fifths. So square them. We get nine over 25, 16 over 25. Good to go. That one's not too bad. Uh, we just have to be careful here that we know that we are in the uh, eigenstate of psi one whenever we apply this. Uh, now here's where the real tricky part comes. In part C, right after the measurement of B, the particles has a probability of being, well, I have a 925th probability of being in psi one or phi one because of what we just measured. I don't know for a fact, I just have probabilities. So we have nine over 25 probability to be in the state of phi one which of course, this is what I was trying to tell you, don't worry about what's on the left-hand side. We just know that these uh, eigenstates are related via this linear combination style. And so similarly, I also don't know if I'm going to be in the state, the eigenstate of phi two, but I have a probability of being an eigenstate phi two from these uh, coefficients here. So I have 16 over 25th chance to be in phi two. So what this means now is that we're going to have to find a joint probability because we don't know the result of the measurement on B. Let's see how that looks. All right, so if then we measured uh, and we're trying to find out what A1 was back again, we note here that we have to just be careful because we only have the probability of A1 occurring in phi1 with the three-fifths probability. So square or with the three-fifths. So square it, that gives us our 925th 
for the case of A1 with respect to the eigenstate phi1, A2 or A1 again, but with respect to the eigenstate phi2 gives us four fifths, so square that, we get 16 over five. Well, we need, since we don't know what the eigenstate is, we need the probability of the eigenstate and then the probability of what's going on within that eigenstate. So thus we have a joint or total probability of PA1 is equal to the multiplicative uh, probabilities. Where this was the probability, the blue here was the probability of being an eigenstate phi1. The green was the probability of being an eigenstate phi2. And then if we want to find A1 from the probabilities of being in those particular states, we get a 9 25ths and a 16 25ths from right here. So you multiply and add those together. We see we get 337 over 625, which is about 50%. Um, but it, it, the joint probability here is what is going to make these things a little nasty if we're not careful. We don't know what happened after the measurement B. We're just looking at what are the probabilities of finding measurements within B. And so we have to use those probabilities to determine what probabilities that we are in those eigenstates. From those eigenstates, we can find out each independent probability. And the joint, we have to multiply them together. So here, just be careful. This is going to happen again. And, you know, the author gives us some more words. The measurement of B even if we didn't know the outcome of that measurement, collapses the wave function and thereby alters the probabilities for the second measurement of A. Again, what we're saying here is that we just don't know what the measurement on B will collapse to, so we have to do the multiplication of probabilities. It should also be known that you know, if we inadvertently neglected to measure B, the second measurement would be certain to reproduce the result A1. So be aware that that measurement will make a probabilistic determination um, and here we see that if we didn't have the blue and green, 9 and 16 would add together to give us 25. So we'd have 25 over 25, which would return back A1. So that's why we have to be careful. But a pretty cool question, and it makes us have to be careful of what we're given and, that, and therefore what we can use. So thank you for watching. Until next time, stay curious and happy learning.